ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفر ونعود بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم Verily all praise, all glory, all thanks belong to Allah. We thank Him, we glorify Him, we exalt Him, and we seek His help. I seek refuge in Allah from the evil of myself, and we shall seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves. And we shall seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our sins. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of being worshipped except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his final messenger. Amma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqati, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, be mindful of Allah and save yourself. Save yourself from dying, secure yourself in dying, in the true submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secure yourself in dying in the true submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, secure yourself from dying in the true submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there's no success except with the success of Allah. And the dunya will come to an end. And Allah is the only one that will remain. And He will reward us for the best of what we did. So take that ayah seriously. Save yourself. Secure yourself. Take actions, prioritize and do an actions that will make, keep you in that path. In that path of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fear Allah from being negligent. Fear Allah from ignoring the responsibilities for some worldly, temporarily worldly gain. Brothers and sisters, verily with every ease, with every hardship there is ease. Verily with every hardship there is ease. Surah Al-Sharh. We will take a look at Surah Al-Sharh. But with, before taking a look at Surah Al-Sharh, we have to look at what was the condition of the Prophet ﷺ before the revelation. And why was he worried about his people? And why was he concerned about his people? And what led him to go and contemplate in Ghaira, seeking guidance from the Supreme Being just for His people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet Alam nashrah laka sadra. Have we not expanded your chest? Meaning, have we not illuminated your chest and made it vast enough so that it can it can uh, accept this message that is coming for you, this message, this law, this revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing the Prophet for this great responsibility. And then he said, this message, so this is a, a, a glad tidings, right, to the Prophet that he, oh, Allah did something for him. 
Alam nasrah laka sadrak. And then, wa wada'ana anka wizrak. Alladhi anqada dhahrak. And we removed from you the hardship, the difficulty. What is that hardship? What is the hardship that concerns us? If we are, if, if we are believers who are thinking about the hereafter, then what is that which concerns us? What is that which concerns us? Is my book going to be given on the right? Or is my book going to be given on my left? Is my book filled with good deeds? Or is my book filled with sins? Right? So what is the, the what Allah removed from the Prophet ﷺ? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in the Quran, Allah says, لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهِ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ دَنْبِكِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرِ Allah forgive the Prophet's previous any sins and any future sins. So he is protected. To such an extent, now he's given this great gift by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what, what is the proactive response? The response of the Prophet ﷺ is that he used to uh, spend long nights making qiyam, right? And Aisha radiallahu said what? Said, Ya Rasulullah, your sins are forgiven. Why do you pray so much? His feet used to get swollen. Ask yourself, Ya, O oh, oh, followers of the Messenger of Allah, ask yourself, judge yourself before you, be, before you judge on the Day of Judgment. Ask yourself, when was the last time your feet got swollen in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When was the last time you got tired worshiping Allah? I don't mean when was the last time you came tired to worship Allah. That's not, that's not what I mean. I mean, when was the last time that you became tired because you were busy worshiping Allah? Like when you go to the gym. You don't go to the gym tired. You go to the gym with a goal in mind, you work out, and, you, and the next day you have, you're sore. Right? You're in bed. Maybe you can't even pray standing up because you're so sore. Right? So subhanAllah, Allah removed this hardship from the Messenger of Allah and He said to Aisha, shouldn't I be a grateful servant? Shouldn't I be a grateful servant? That is when you show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're grateful for His ni'mah. When was the last time you said, Oh Allah, thank you for blessing me with Islam. When was the last time that you realized that that is, that, that is a ni'mah? When was the last time that you thanked Allah for being able to look at the book of Allah? At the preserved, miraculous book of Allah? I'm not saying when was the last time you read it. I'm saying when was the last time you just gave thanks by looking at the book of Allah and being grateful for being part of this blessed ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Allah subhanahu wa taala also gave gave him another glad tidings that he says, "What and we raised you up in status to be remembered to the end of time. And wherever Allah's name is mentioned, His name is mentioned. We conclude the salah. And we mention the name of Allah, of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We make the Adhan, we mention the name of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We make the Iqama, we mention the name of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the blessing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That Allah honored him. Brothers and sisters, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after saying we raise you up in status, we remove the burden of, that, of, of, of sins, right? We remove that burden. 
We opened your chest, ready to receive this message, and then Allah says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرًا Verily, with hardship there is ease. Verily, with hardship there is ease. So grammatically, grammatically, when a word has al لِتَعْرِيف Right? And the word is repeated twice, then it's, in the, it's, it's only indicating one, one, one uh, hardship. It's not saying, it's two, it says, فَإِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ This al-us, this hardship, is one. Grammatically, because it has the al. But the yusra doesn't have the al. So as, uh, uh, as, is, it was explained that that means that one hardship can never overcome two ease. One hardship can never overcome two ease. Brothers and sisters, when we look at, we all go through struggles. We all go through hardships. And it is a blessing of Allah when we enjoy the opportunity to get some relief. We work hard, maybe double shift. We work hard when we're starting a new business. I mean, nobody works as hard as you because you believe in what you're pursuing. But when you finally establish your business and you become successful, Nobody will be able to appreciate that blessing like you. Nobody. Because nobody went through it like you. Nobody spent sleepless nights planning like you. The same thing when you're pursuing to get married. Sometimes the doors are closed. But when you finally achieve that blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all you have subhanAllah is to be grateful subhanAllah. The blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that the believers, know that the example of our prophets were, was one of true tawakkul ala Allah. True trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An example, a young child. A young child is going to be thrown in the fire because of his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah the Almighty set order to the fire to be cold for Ibrahim alayhi salam. He didn't abandon his, his belief in Allah even though everybody, the whole village, even his father was making the idols. But he didn't abandon it as a child. And he faced his hardship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieved him. Musa alayhi salam, his people are losing hope. They're behind us. They're behind us. And Musa said, Kalla, nah, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. And He will guide us. Allah is with us and He will guide us. That is the spirit of the believer. Listen carefully. That is the spirit of the believer in the face of hardship. The true Iman demonstrates in the face of hardship. And also in the time of ease, the true Iman demonstrates, shows by the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that ease. Brothers and sisters, there is a moment in Jummah when the dua is accepted. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala shafir wa salim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praise and thanks are due to Allah.
And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his companions and all who follow him until their day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, I would like to ask you a question, but you don't have to answer in Jum'ah, inshallah. You answer to yourself. Right? When was the last time that you visited a hospital to visit a non-relative? No interest. You're going for the sake of Allah. When was the last time you visited the grave to visit a non-relative, to visit the Muslims in the grave? These are from the sunnahs of the Prophet He encouraged us and the blessings are great to visit the sick and to visit the graves because as he said, the graves remind us of the Akhirah. The graves remind us of the Akhirah. The graves reflecting on the reality of where we will go will at least maybe guide us into how we move around in this life before we go. We can prioritize, make decisions. Brothers and sisters, yesterday I was blessed with visiting a man that I met in Eid al-Adha, in an Eid al-Adha celebration for the Muslims. And this man was a Muslim. We spent some time talking and I looked at him, he's from my country, he looks like my, a little bit like my dad, and also from New Jersey, so we spent some quality time together. Then I find out that I got a message a few days ago that he was in the hospital, that he's actually in a hospice, right? This week they amputated one of his legs. They drained his stomach eight bottles, right, of, of 600 cc's, and somebody can correct me if it's 500 or 600, but yes, eight bottles of fluid from his stomach. Half of his arm is black and blue due to the fact that they can't find his veins. And the only thing in his mind was, I am, you know, I want to meet my Lord and he's peace with me. That's the only thing in, 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 in his mind. After spending some time with him, I said, if you want, and he was planning to get cremated, as many people in this country, because they say to get buried is too expensive. I can't afford it. It is Allah's earth to return someone who came from dirt to the dirt. We have to make it even impossible. I said, if you want to please Allah, then that's out of the question. Right? Because if you get cremated, you're not going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's without options. And as we were talking, I said, so do you really want to please Allah? I said, the way you start is like we do when we take our, our cars for a tune-up. You, you have to get a spiritual tune-up, right? She has the glass when it's filled with stains, and you get the Windex, and, and it looks like it's, there's no glass. That's how clean it is. I said, just by saying these two sentences, this is what you do to your, to your iman, right? This is what you do. You purify your, your belief in God, and this is the most important. The burial is after. And he said, yes, I want to do it. That was yesterday. He made shahada. And alhamdulillah, he, today I was supposed to go at 10 in the morning. And it's by al Faruq, so it's not around the corner. I was supposed to go at 10 in the morning to go and help him fill out his, his will and his you know, his request to be buried as a Muslim. 
Then I find out that he's on the medication and he's knocked out. But Allah blessed him. Right after making Shahada, I looked and he, he has his phone, which he has also a note like myself. So we kind of cool like that. All right, so he, he opened his note and he had a video, uh, an audio, and he pressed play. And it happened to be Quran with, English, with Spanish translation and voice. I was so happy that no one told him to pick up the phone and open up the application and press play. His family has abandoned him. Only a sister who accepted Islam three years ago, who knows him 10 years, has been taking care of him. The children say, we don't have time. We're too busy working. We don't have time. Parents are not replaceable. Relatives are not replaceable. Jobs are replaceable. Spouses are replaceable. Parents are not. How neglectful are we to our parents? How many times do we tell them, wait? What about if there comes a time where you can't tell them, wait? <coughs> Brothers and sisters, Know that after every difficulty there is peace. Have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't lose trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that if you trust Allah, He suffices you. But also, if you don't have no hardship, don't just forget and neglect your other responsibilities. Take the time to go and walk through a hospital. Visit the sick. Go to the hospices. Go with your children. Let's take a trip. Where? Are we going to Kiva? Are we going to uh, SeaWorld? Where are we going? Teach your children. Let's go visit the, the grave. Let's go to the cemetery. Why? Explain to them of the reality, one day I will go. One day you will go. But the most important thing is, how would we go? How would we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Would He be pleased with us or not? Many times we say, we don't want to talk to the children about this. Let's just talk about happy, happy, fun, fun times. Our children, they go through hardships as well. And because we only tell them happy, happy, fun, fun times, they don't know how to deal with it sometimes. This is life. Difficulty, hardship. This is life. Allah says, He will test you with loss of wealth, loss of health, loss of loved ones to see which of you are uh, truly patient. And Allah says, and if you're patient, know that you you would not be able to be patient except with the help of Allah. At the end of Surah Al-Nahr. Know that if you're patient, you would not be able to truly be patient except with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yuhibu sabirin. Inna Allah ma'a sabirin. Allah loves the patient. Allah is with the patient. Brothers and sisters, three action items. One, Never lose trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two, visit the sick. And three, visit the graves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the best reward in, in this dunya and in the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ربنا أدنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذا بالنار ربنا أدنا من لدنك رحمة وحيلنا من أمرنا رشدا 
ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفرنا سيئاتنا توفنا من الأبرار اللهم اشف مرضانا مرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا موتى المسلمين اللهم اصلح حال المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اصلح حال المسلمين في كل مكان يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا إلى طاعتك وصلى الله وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين